Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and today I want to work on a kit that I've got from my girlfriend's quilt shop. And it is a kit that's going to be perfect for summer, and it's called Summer Is. Is that not the cutest little wall hanging? Let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is prepare my background fabric. I'm going to be able to cut my nice white with that red polka dots and a product that is called Shape Flex. It's very much like an interfacing. We have a fabric on one side and adhesive on the other. And I'm going to be able to iron the two of these together. This is going to give this top fabric some stability. So I'm going to cut the two of these the same size and fuse them together. That rough back is adhesive. So I'm going to be able to iron those two together. And they are the same size, so I can just iron them and go on to my next stage. So the next stage will be these little stars. I will be making three friendship stars. So I have my three different greens that are going to be in the center. And I have three corner squares of that white fabric. And then the additional pieces here I need to make half square triangles. And to make those half square triangles, I'm going to do it the traditional way by taking the two fabrics, placing them right sides together, draw a line from corner to corner, and then I'm going to be able to stitch on the outside of those lines at a quarter of an inch. Once we have stitched the quarter inch from each side, we're going to be able to cut that in half and then press that fabric so that the seam is going towards that dark side. From here, we're going to be able to trim this block down to two inches. And then we're gonna have four half square triangles of each of those greens. We will now be able to put those in place in those four corners. And we're going to have a diagonal so that the white is always facing out. So we're going to sew these three pieces together and then we can sew them together in rows. Once those little friendship stars are done, we're going to be able to put the little sashing in between and we are going to have one row ready from that project. We get to finish the bottom of this wall hanging by adding on the striped bottom and that red top and we're finished that bottom piece. The next thing we get to work on are our words. And the pattern does have those words and the reversed because we do need to put them on some type of a fusible web. I like using a light heat and bond and I do like these sheets that I can put in the printer. These sheets go fine in just a regular inkjet printer, but do not use a laser. The heat of the laser will melt that glue in your printer. So I have the words printed out on that fusible web, and I'm just going to be able to iron these in and cut them off. So we're going to be looking at the reverse until we turn it to the right side. Now they have made a double M and an extra M on this side. And that is so that we can overlap them, so we can make sure that that word is lined up. So what I would recommend is to iron this piece on first. So once it's cooled down, I'm going to be able to put this sheet over top and line it up. Now I don't need all of this on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line that up to the M underneath. Then I'm going to iron just a little piece on this side, just to anchor it in. I'm not going to iron at all, just a little bit of this corner. So I have that stuck on and it's in line. I'm gonna cut right through the center of that M, just on that top piece. And we can see now that it's lined up perfectly. Flip that up. Just peel back that paper so the adhesive is there and just lay it over top. Now I can continue to press this area. And by doing it this way, I now have no overlap and I can cut out that shape going all the way around the outside. And 
I'll put on my is. And once that's all cut out, we have summer is in the right direction. Now we can put this right on the background fabric now or wait. I like to wait and have all of my components made first. So I have my summer is and the bottom done. Next thing we can cut out are those watermelon seeds. Now I'm going to be able to cut them out from what's left of the cutout of summer is. So I do want to make a little template out of that watermelon seed. I'm going to take a piece of cardboard and place it underneath that picture. And then with a pen, I'm going to trace over top of this very hard, going back and forth. And what that's doing is that's putting an imprint on my cardboard. Then I'm going to be able to cut that shape out. Once I have it cut out, I have a template, and I'm going to be able to go and just trace 12 of those on that leftover fabric. I already have that heat and bond on there, so I could just trace it and cut them out. Once my seeds are done, we get to make our watermelons. We have these shapes that we get to trace out on freezer paper. And there are areas here where it says center seam, seam guide, we need to make sure that we have a mark on this paper to do the same thing. And then we can roughly cut these out. Then we take those rough cut pieces and we iron them onto our fabric. There is a waxy side of this paper and that's the side that's going to stick on the fabric. I like to put these pieces on the top of the fabric. I'm using this as a template and it'll just be easier to remove as I'm stitching. Those straight sides I can cut with a rotary cutter and just use the scissors to cut that curve. After those wedges are cut out, we are looking at the back side of the fabric. We have two for the small and four for the large. We will need to sew these together. So I will be able to just fold this and stitch, but we're going to sew those four wedges together and the two small wedges together. And by leaving that freezer paper on, it's stabilizing this fabric so we don't have to worry about that fabric stretching. So this is what we're going to be looking at. We do need to sew those right sides together. And I would recommend pressing those seams open. I also used a small stitch for this seam just to make this paper come off easier. And that paper will now come off. We can trim off those little dog ears and that small watermelon is now ready to go. Now I need to do the large watermelon and I'm going to do that in the same way. And my big watermelon is ready to go. We get to work on these tiny little dimensional flowers. We have the flower petal design and I'm going to trace it out on that cardboard again. Place it down and with the sharp pen just go right over top of that so I can trace it out and cut it out. We are now going to need to make 12 petals. Place your yellow so it's right sides together and we need to trace 12 of these out. We need to leave a half inch between each of our templates because we do need to cut that out and we will need a seam allowance. So I've left enough space between all of the pieces so that I can cut them out using a seam allowance. I did not stitch these flat edges. I only need to stitch these petals, but I do like to back stitch right at these points. Once I have these all stitched, I'm going to cut them out with a quarter inch or an eighth inch seam allowance. Once those little petals are cut out, we need to turn them right side out. And there is an easy way. If you can get a straw, put the straw through the center, and in the end, take something that's not too pointy but will fit inside that straw, and you can start to put that through. Once it's come out a portion of the way, you can remove that straw and finish turning that over. And then just have those corners come out. So we're gonna have 12 of these cute little petals. With those petals done, 
all of my components are done so I can put together this project. Now the directions have us put the project together as we do each step. I just like to have all of my things made first and then put it together. So either way will work just fine. So I'm going to start and sew that bottom piece onto that large piece of fabric and this is where I'm going to put all of those applique shapes. Here's the fun part where I get to put it together. I have my background fabric and all of my components ready. So I can just place them as close as I can to that design. And once it's laid out, I'm going to be able to peel the back off of the words, fuse those words on, and then put a little bit of glue and iron these on. And for the glue, I just used a fabric glue. It's temporary and it'll wash out. Just put glue on the back and pressed it down. I can take that paper off now. So we need to do some type of an applique around your black lettering and a satin stitch along these edges. These curves will have rickrack on them. So we can just do a row of stitching just to anchor them on as we're working. But this edge will be covered with that rickrack. My words are down, my watermelon is done, I'm going to be able to put my seeds on. Peel back that paper and fuse them on and then stitch around those seeds. What we have left to do is put the rickrack around the bottom of the watermelons, the rickrack throughout, and those flowers. But those I'm going to add on after I quilt it. And that way the rickrack is not in my way. I can just stitch it on after. So I'm going to sandwich this just like a regular quilt and quilt it. For the quilting, I just did some straight line quilting and then went around the melons with some straight stitching. I went around the stars and went inside the stars at a quarter inch and just stitched those stripes. Now I'm going to be able to put the rickrack around those watermelons and that loose one where the flowers are going to get attached. Turn under that edge and just give it a little tug as you go around. And if you press it and just put a little bit of glue to hold it down, you're going to be able to stitch around the one and around the other. And once that is done, we have the flowers and that little vine. I'm going to put the vine on first and then at the ends, I'm going to add the flowers. We're going to be able to sew these petals together and I would recommend a double strand of thread. Just weave that through all of them. I'm going to leave a little thread on the one side and just pull the petals through. So I have all my petals there. Pull that thread together and tie a knot so all of your petals are together in the center. I'm going to leave that thread tail on so that I can stitch those petals onto this quilt. I'm going to start with the thread in the back and just take a little stitch in each one of those centers. Once that little flower is stitched down in the center, I'm going to put a white button and a yellow one on top. And my flower is set to go. Now I can finish off the other buttons. With my final buttons on, I will just need to bind it and I'll be done. And with the binding done, it's now ready to hang up on the wall. And I have it done in time for this summer. It was a lot of fun to make, and I'm looking forward to looking at it and enjoying it. I'll put a link in the description to my girlfriend's quilt shop so you can check it out. And thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. I have a newsletter. It's all free under So Very Easy. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.